There was an interesting study published in the journal Emerging Infectious Diseases, which basically sent a warning to consumers who eat Asian swamp eels. There is a parasitic risk from eating raw or undercooked Asian swamp eels. Joining me on the phone now is the lead author of the study, Dr. Rebecca Cole. Dr. Cole is a parasitologist with a USGS National Wildlife Health Center. Hello, Dr. Cole, and thanks for coming on the show. Oh, good afternoon, Robert. Thank you for the invitation. Great. It's great to have you. Now, you and your colleagues are advising the public about this parasitic risk. And uh, let me first ask, this is kind of an obscure parasite. So how and why did you decide to study the Asian swamp eel? And how much of a problem is it in the United States? Well, um, my my uh, colleague and I, Dr. Uh, Leo Nico, um, we're looking at um, the, basically looking at animals that are imported, and he has uh, been studying the swamp eels for well over close to two decades as an invasive species. We were funded by USGS through USGS Invasive Species Program, so our interest was looking at one: is there um, or are there parasites that would be of health concern? Concerned, but also um, are there parasites? Um, at risk of being spread when these fish are released into the wild. Uh, he's been studying populations in both Georgia and Florida and uh, most recently in New Jersey where the eels have been released. And um, he had wondered, well, with eels coming in through the market uh, and we know that they're infected in, the, uh, in their native habitats, are they carrying these infections into the United States? And an easy place to look, of course, is in the ethnic markets where the animals are brought in live and um, they are sold either live or freshly butchered and uh, people consume them. So we were concerned that not only for human health, but also is there a potential for some of these parasites to be released into native fish and wildlife. Okay, and, and are you seeing that, the transfer of the parasite from the eel to other creatures? Um, we we are now looking at the parasites that are not NASA stomes, and we are finding some that could be of concern, but that study is not complete yet. Okay. Uh, the ma- the one that you cited, the Emerging Infectious Disease article, looks specifically only at NASA stomes, right. which are a potential zoonotic uh, parasitic worm. Right. And how many human cases of nathostoma do we see in the U.S. annually? Do you? It's it's very low. Yeah. Um, there are a few cases uh, reported um, every couple of years. I, I actually had a gentleman call me from Washington that said that he had recently been diagnosed with it uh, after eating, they think, maybe cerviche, which is when you take fish and you marinate it in lime or lemon juice. And, of course, that does not kill um, larval right. uh, nematodes. They're very resistant. They evolved to pass through digestive systems, which, as you know, are very acidic. Mm-hmm. Um, and they survive quite well in lemon and lime juice. So every once in a while you'll hear of a report. Most often they are attributed to individuals who have traveled outside of the United States right. within the last 10 years to Asia or Southeast Asia, where um, there are, are quite a few reports every year because it is endemic there. So let's go ahead and, and get to the parasite so the listeners can uh, understand what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. So can you describe what is nathostoma and what kind of pathology, what kind of disease does it cause in humans? Well, uh, I'll start with the life cycle. It's sure. a nematode, um, the one that we found in the, the market eels, typically matures in, in felines or canines, cats, dogs, or wild felines and canines. And the adult lives in the stomach. Uh, it passes eggs out of the stomach through the GI tract in the feces. Uh, once the feces reaches water, uh, the eggs in the feces will hatch. And then zooplankton, which are sort of like they're commonly called water fleas, Mm -hmm. will pick up these larvae, they'll grow for a little bit in the zooplankton, and then a fish or an amphibian or reptile will eat that zooplankton, and the uh, larval nematode will then uh, move out from the digestive tract in the fish into the liver or the muscle, and then wait to be consumed by, in this case, a dog or a cat. If a human accidentally eats uh, that fish or amphibian that is undercooked or hasn't been frozen long enough to kill the larva, then the parasite assumes that it's in another intermediate host and it starts to wander. So typically, uh, if you become infected, you at the point of where the parasite is in your stomach and then 
migrates out of the stomach into the body cavity, you will experience um, stomach pain, sometimes diarrhea, general nausea, lethargy. Often the uh, nematode will wander, but it will stay in the subcutaneous tissues, mainly in the trunk or the body or in the arms. Um, so in three to four weeks after eating uh, one of these larvae, you may notice swellings um, in your subcutaneous tissues that migrate. Uh, I think one study, they can migrate up to a centimeter an hour. Um, so you might have a swelling on your arm, and then two or three days later, you might notice swelling um, on your side. Um, often they stay subcutaneous in their migration, but if they migrate into the body um, cavity and start migrating through organs such as the liver or the lungs uh, or into the central nervous system, sure. then you can get into quite serious disease issues and death. And you mentioned ethnic markets selling this eel. Mm -hmm. and I guess my question is, who is eating raw or undercooked swamp eel? Well, um, a lot of... In the uh, U.S. Yeah. In the U.S.? Well, yeah. a lot of uh, individuals who... Uh, either are of Southeast Asian descent or they enjoy the, the, the um, foods from those countries. Uh, they go to the markets. They enjoy having fresh fish. Um, they purchase them and uh, eat them. Um, so it's a variety of people. Um, most often it's individuals who have immigrated here and have, right. have brought with them the variety of foods and dishes that they enjoy in their homeland. Um, so um, I know that the markets that we visited were in um, Atlanta and Chinatown in New York City, um, a market there in Orlando. So uh, they're, they're across uh, the country, usually in large metropolitan areas, uh, but they're individuals who enjoy um, dishes from, that are native to Southeast Asia and Asia. Yeah, the reason I ask is because somebody asked me that, and uh, mm -hmm. I was like, well, I, I'm pretty sure this is why. But, yeah. um, And I read uh, that the eel was found right here in the Tampa Bay area. Yes, um, yes, it is. So how did it get here? Well, the supposition is that it was released either through uh, these individuals that come into the, the ethnic markets. You can purchase them live. You can take them home and butcher them in some instances people let them go. Uh, there's also some um, religious ceremonies where people will buy um, animals, uh, such as fish, in a market setting and then set them free. Um, there's also the opportunity for release in the aquarium or pet trade. Uh, I think it was from 2005 to 2008 we received over several billion live animals into the United States legally. Uh, for food or uh, pet trade. So there's all sorts of animals coming into the United States. Okay. Well, Dr. Cole, uh, just to go ahead and close, is there anything else you want to add about your study that um, the listeners uh, should know? Well, we're looking forward to examining the rest of the parasites to see what parasites uh, may be there that can be released into uh, native birds and uh, fish and wildlife. And it's just a matter of fact that, you know, when you import animals, you get the whole animal. You get the ecosystem that's in sure. the animal. They don't check their parasites or microbes at the port at which they enter. Uh, and we just need to be aware of that. Well, it was a very fascinating study, and I hope to have you on again when you uh, uh, continue your studies on this. I've been talking to Dr. Rebecca Cole with the USGS. Thank you, ma'am, for coming on the show. I appreciate it. Thank you, Robert. You bet.